Do you know that Huntington's disease is a rare neurodegenerative disorder with a worldwide prevalence of 2.7 per 100,000? It is a condition that stops parts of the brain working properly over time and causes nerve cells in the brain to decay over time. And this mutation gene can be passed on from a parent to a child. This disease causes progressive loss of control of movements, thoughts and emotion. It gets gradually worse over time and is usually fatal after a period of up to 20 years. The Genetic Basis of Huntington's Disease What are genes? Genes are small units of information inside our cells that contain instructions for how our bodies develop and function. For example, they code for traits like our eye color, hair color and height. The gene that causes Huntington's disease is called the Huntington gene, HTT. Although the function of this protein is unclear, it appears to play an important role in nerve cells which are called neurons in the brain. The HTT variant that causes Huntington's disease involves a DNA segment made up of a series of three DNA building blocks, which are cytosine, adenine and guanine that appear multiple times in a row and the mutation is found to be on chromosome number 4. The codon CAGE encodes for the amino acid glutamine. Normally, the CAG segment is repeated 10 to 35 times within the gene. However, in people with Huntington's disease, the CAG segment is repeated more than 36 times. Now, let's look at the pathophysiology of Huntington's disease. How did it happen? This is due to the elongated Huntington protein. This causes an increase in the size of the CAG segment that leads to the production of abnormally long version of Huntington protein. Elongated Huntington protein is cut into smaller toxic fragments that bind together and accumulate in neurons disrupting the normal function of cell. Dysfunction and eventually death of neurons in certain areas of the brain causes the signs and symptoms of Huntington disease. Thus, large Huntington protein will increase CAG repetition. Therefore, it can cause early disease onset and more severe its expression. Primary feature is the degeneration of neurons in the putamen, caudate and the cerebral cortex. Here is the comparison between a healthy brain and Huntington's brain. As can be seen here, Huntington's brain has enlarged ventricles and degeneration and atrophy of the dorsal sternum. In the direct pathway, degeneration of encephalin containing medium spiny neurons in basal ganglia which cause chorea. While for indirect pathway, Additional loss of substance P containing medium spiny neurons which cause dystonia and echinacea. There are multiple theories and more than one can occur at the same time, which includes the neuronal aggregates, transcriptional dysregulation, excitotoxicity which due to a combination of increased glutamate as well as the glutamate agonist release from the cortical afferents, mitochondrial dysfunction and altered energy metabolism as well as changes in axonal transport and synaptic dysfunction. Next up, it is the clinical presentation. It is divided into two stages of symptoms which are the early and the late. So, for the early symptoms, it is include depression, difficulty in concentrating, stumbling and clumsiness, personality shift hallucination, fidgeting, and memory loss. Moving on to the late symptoms. The most prominent symptoms that can be seen in these stages are jerking movement and involuntary fidgeting. Both of these symptoms are known as chorea. Other than that, slow and rigid movement, difficulty in speaking, swallowing problem, difficulty to breathe, and difficulty in moving around. Moving on, what is the role of genetic testing in diagnosing Huntington's disease? 
A diagnostic genetic test is carried out when an individual is already symptomatic. The symptoms must include an equivocal motor signs. Genetic testing can confirm or rule out a suspected genetic condition or help determine a person's chance of developing or passing on a genetic disorder. Genetic testing makes it possible to predict with a higher degree of certainty if someone will develop Huntington's disease. The most effective and accurate method of testing for Huntington disease called the direct genetic test, which counts the number of cytosine, adenine, and guanine CAG repeats in the Huntington's disease gene using DNA taken from a blood sample. Direct testing for the Huntington's disease mutation through the use of polymerase chain reaction PCR has greatly simplified the technical aspects of genetic testing for Huntington's disease. Testing for Huntington's disease is now faster, simpler, more accurate, more affordable, and more widely available. As mentioned earlier, Huntington's disease is caused by a mutation in the gene for a protein called Huntington. The defect causes the building blocks of DNA CAG to repeat many more times than they normally do. Therefore, the presence of 36 or more CAG repeats will diagnose Huntington's disease, whereas 26 or CAG fewer repeats rules out Huntington's disease. Now you might be thinking, can we cure Huntington's disease? Huntington's disease cannot be cured or slowed down. However, we can manage the symptoms through medication and non-medication means. Let's start with medication treatment. Firstly, for movement symptoms, high dopamine level and high dopamine receptor activation in the basal ganglia, which is part of the brain responsible for movement control, is the main culprit of chorea symptoms, which as we have discussed before, the involuntary jerking and fidgeting movements of the limbs and body. Let us welcome the two main medications used to relieve chorea. Hi, I'm tretabenazine and this is my sister, Deutretabenazine. We act by inhibiting vascular monoamine transporter 2, VMAT2, in the brain. This transporter will help to store dopamine inside a vesicle. By inhibiting VMAT2, dopamine storage will decrease. Subsequently, dopamine release will also decrease. Lastly, activation of dopamine receptor will also decrease. I am a better choice though, because I act longer and have minimal side effects. Yes, there are also side effects that need to be looked out for, such as depression and Parkinsonism, which is a slow movement. Patients with active depressions, especially those who take MAOI antidepressants such as phenylzine and selegiline, should not take tetrapenazine or deutetrapenazine as it can worsen the depression symptoms. Instead, Amantadine is a recommended alternative. Yo, I am Amantadine. I antagonize the action of n methyl d aspartate and MDA receptors by increasing the receptor closure. Consuming me can relieve chorea, but make sure to beware of the side effects such as irregular heartbeat, dry mouth, and inability to sleep. Hey, antipsychotics, it's your turn now. Hello, we are second generation antipsychotics. We mainly inhibit activation of dopamine 2 receptor at the postsynaptic neurons. Patients with active psychiatric symptoms such as depression, lost contact with reality, and aggressive behavior can take us. Second generation antipsychotics such as olanzapine, risperidone, and thiopride is more preferred than the first generation as it has more tolerable side effects. However, in the case of uncontrollable chorea, the first generation drug haloperidol is commonly given. Do be aware of side effects like weight gain, Parkinsonism, and sleepiness. And especially when me, Risperidol, beware of breast enlargement. Huntington's disease patient may also be presented with behavioral disturbance, most commonly the depression, which may cause low motivation throughout the day. As depression is associated with low serotonin, antidepressants like citalopram, acetalopram, fluoxetine, or sertraline can be given. They increase serotonin level in the brain by inhibiting its reuptake. 
Antipsychotics mentioned just now can also be given to suppress irritability, fear, and agitation. Lastly, cognitive symptoms such as memory loss, inability to focus, and hallucination is associated with low acetylcholine level in the brain. For these symptoms, cholinesterase inhibitors such as donpozil and rivastigmine can be given. They inhibit acetylcholine breakdown by inhibiting cholinesterase enzyme, thereby increasing acetylcholine level. Side effects When antidepressants is used for a long time, altered mental state, dry mouth, increased heart rate, increased body temperature, diarrhea and nausea, tremors, and muscle cramp can occur. Meanwhile, for cholinesterase inhibitors, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, and low heart rate are the common side effects. In addition to pharmacological treatments, non-pharmacological interventions play a crucial role in managing Huntington's disease, enhancing the quality of life for both patients and caregivers. Physical therapy is a cornerstone in the management of Huntington's disease. Working with a physiotherapist, individuals with HD can develop personalized exercise plans to maintain mobility, improve balance, and alleviate muscle stiffness and weakness. Techniques such as joint movement, stretching, and massage can greatly enhance physical well-being. Occupational therapy offers practical solutions for maintaining independence in daily activities. By teaching adaptive techniques and providing assistive devices like handrails, adaptive utensils, and voice control appliances, individuals with HD can navigate their surroundings more effectively. A speech therapy addresses communication challenges and swallowing difficulties commonly associated with Huntington's disease. Through specialized techniques and exercises, speech therapists help patients maintain their ability to communicate effectively and swallow safely. Supportive care is essential for managing the multifaceted symptoms of Huntington's disease. Palliative care focuses on enhancing quality of life by addressing symptoms, providing emotional support, and facilitating advanced care planning. Nutritional support is vital for individuals with Huntington's disease. Nutritional counseling and dietary modifications are necessary to ensure adequate nutrition and hydration. A high-calorie diet can help prevent weight loss, and modifications to food can make it easier to chew and swallow.